gardening, a monthly installment of where I share what's happening in my garden, the things that I'm planting, things that I acquire for my garden, and just generally all things growing. Uh, my name is Jacqueline. I live in Brooklyn, New York City with my boyfriend and two kitties. And it's been quite a busy month since the last time that we spoke. So many changes. My propagation station has had a major upgrade. I got my greenhouse outside. There's so many things to be getting on with in the garden. So I cannot wait to show you. I have no new um, acquisitions or things that I have purchased really. Actually, that's not true. Well, the propagation station. So I've acquired some really cool grow lights, but no like little trinket things or books or additional seeds or anything like that. It's really the propagation station that has seen the most changes. So the first thing we're gonna do is check out propagation station. Then I'll take you to my kind of miniature plastic greenhouse outside. And then we're gonna be going to the garden to, um, let's see, what are we planting today? Oh, my sweet pea, tea pea. Um, the ranunculus corms have been planted, but they keep getting dug up either by a dog or by a squirrels. I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, kitty, what are you eating? This is Jafar. Yes. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, propagation station, the greenhouse, and then we will head over to the garden. Okay, my seed starting station is extremely different. You can probably see from the light coming on to me <laughs> that it's much brighter. So this is my new propagation station setup. It's one big utility shelf cart. And then I bought two grow lights uh, from Amazon. Um, you can see there's a lot less plants here than there probably was last month. That's because a lot of them are hardening off outside right now, but of course the peppers and the tomatoes need to be inside. So let me turn off the lights so you can see them better. These are all of my pepper varieties. I planted, um, I sowed three of each variety that I want to grow and there are nine varieties that I want to grow. Not all of them sprouted, but there's at least one for every single one and most of them have two or three per plant. So the plan is, the plan is that I will plant the strongest uh, seedling out into the garden when the time is right, and then I'll keep the other two as a backup or other one, whatever extra I have, as an additional backup in case one of these fails out in the garden for some reason. But I have so many varieties. Like I said, I have um, Sugar Rush Peach, Lemon Drop, the Penis Pepper that I'm growing with, Shiso Seeds, Ahi Pineapple, Paprika, um, cayenne pepper, scotch bonnet, cubanelle, a basic red pepper. All of my peppers are from uh, Baker Creek seeds. So that's what's on the top there. Andrew is gonna be Lord of the Herbs. So this is his herb tray. We have basil, um, oregano, sage. These are spinach seedlings, which are supposed to be direct sown, but we did some here anyway. Um, cilantro, dill, and rosemary. Oh, and chives. So that's kind of our um, herb tray. We're gonna get some window boxes and put them outside the windows so that we can use those when we need to. This is my dedicated tomatoes tray. I just sowed these, I'd say about a week ago, so they're still pretty little. These are some beets back here. Um, and these are stalks right here. So stalks is in the flower stalks. They're apricot and buttercream. But the tomato varieties I have are Rosella, Sweet Million, uh, Sun Gold, German Johnson, Granny Cantrell Johnson, um, and Gardener's Delight. And that's it for what is currently in Propagation Station. I've been moving a lot of these, like I said, out to my greenhouse outside to harden them off in preparation to plant them in the garden. Our last frost date is the first week of April, April 5th. However, um, the weather forecast right now is saying that it's not even gonna get into the 30s um, for the next 10 days. So it's possible that we really may be out of 
the woods as far as frosts go right now. So we've been in the 40s for the lows pretty consistently. Oh my God, my hair is crazy right now. I've just been outside, so that will do it. But um, yeah, we may be out of the woods, but just to be safe, I'm going to follow the guidelines for what last frost are. So let's go ahead and go outside and I will show you my greenhouse and then we'll go to the garden. I'm heading to my plastic greenhouse, which is just around uh, the back side of my apartment building. I'm really glad that I sowed so many of the seeds as early as I did for some of them. It gave me some practice because this is my first time really growing anything from seed before. So it's been good to kind of learn in that way. So these are plants that have been mostly potted up from the seed trays that they were in before. These were mostly in the 72 cell uh, flats right there. So they were outgrowing those pretty strongly. So we have some foxglove here, some snapdragons right here, um, more snapdragons. These are Madame Butterfly Bronze. That's not arugula, even though it says it is. I just had to mark that that was something different back there. Um, the Royal Bride, these are white ones. And then these ones up here are the Chantilly Sherbert mix, um, Dalmatian Peach, and let's see, yeah, Dalmatian Peach Fox Gloves, um, Camelot Cream Fox Gloves right here. And then in the back, these are all of my Icelandic poppies. Most poppies are a direct sow plant because they don't like their roots disturbed. So the Icelandic poppies are a little bit different than that according to Florette, which is where I bought the Icelandic poppy seeds. And these have to be started indoors about 12 weeks before they have to be planted out. So that's what I've been doing with the Icelandic poppies and that's why these are started indoors and in trays rather than just sown directly in the garden. And then over here are more of the veg. These are some onion plants right here. I have three different ones. I bought yellow of Parma, red globe, and these torpedo shaped uh, red varieties that are like a Fung Florence originally. But yeah, I've got mostly yellow onions. I've sown even more yellow onions right here. And then these are beet seedlings. I got the Solyndra variety because I think it'll be easier for chopping and for pickling. Um, I've multi sown these according to how Charles Dowding does his. That's the same for both um, onions and for the beets. And then back here are very spicy mustard greens that are just kind of exploding right now. Some um, arugula and then a red tipped, let me just pull this out to make it easier to see. Some red tipped kind of curly leaf lettuces, arugula, and then a variety called Little Gem right here, which is honestly not been very successful for me. I mean, I'd say I'd get one out of four that germinates. So, I don't know, that's the one that's back over here. And then these right here, again, are more mustard greens. We've got Green Wave, a Japanese red, um, and another, what's this one called? Southern Giant Curled. And then all of these are onions, but yeah, these are looking really good. I'm gonna be using the cut and come again method, which is just where you pick off the outer edges of the leaves like once every week or so, maybe once every two weeks, and then it grows and then you can pick it again. That way you can kind of grow it in a denser spot and it won't grow into like a full head of lettuce ever. And it's much more useful for me because we don't need a full head of lettuce really ever, so it's easier to just pick the salad greens that I need and then come back and pick more. So let's go on over to the garden. We have a few things that we need to be doing today and I'll see you over there. Andrew and I are in the garden working today. Sit behind me. So I'm doing my tour. There's been quite a few changes and quite a few things to do today. So I'm excited to take you along and show you. 
the last time I talked to you, um, I had like one or two snowdrops, I think. Since then, all of the crocuses have come out. They're done now, though, and um, the daffodils, as you can see behind me, are like going crazy. That's Andrew building my water to my exterior, running water to the exterior of the building. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, so let me show you all of the spring has well and truly sprung in Brooklyn. First thing is this bed is very wide. It's over four feet. So I wanted to get some paving stones so that you can easily walk between the beds so I can get um, to the plants from that side of it and also so my neighbor can more easily get into his beds back there. And very excitingly, the first garlic shoot is up. I have planted my garlic right here along the left side of this bed. And then next to it is gonna go beets and then um, a couple rows of carrots, which I'm going to direct sow today. So right now the garlic is the only thing in the bed except for right here, I've planted some ranunculus corms. And I've also planted some ranunculus corms in these two um, planters and interspersed some over there. But unfortunately, every time I've come to the garden, as you can see by the soil all around, something is getting into them. I suspect a squirrel. They're not eating them though, which is the weird thing. It's like they just dig them up and then they're sitting there. So maybe it's a dog. I don't really know. There are dogs in the building. Um, so it could be a dog, but it's really frustrating. So I'm not sure if they're actually going to grow because they keep getting dug up. The ranunculus corms themselves don't look damaged, like they're not eaten or anything. They're just dug up and left there. So I would assume if it was like a critter, you they would be eaten. So I don't know. So will they grow? Will they not? We will see. But that's all that's been planted so far outside are the ranunculus corms and the garlic. This part of the garden is just bursting into bloom. It's taken care of by my neighbor Sarah whose garden is this long one right here. That's an elderberry tree. Some yucca. Tons of daffodils. The rose bush is looking so much better after I pruned it in the last video, you can see it's springing to life already. It has quite a bit of black spot, so the whole thing is pretty disease ridden, honestly. Roses, as you may or may not know, are very prone to disease, and this one has black spot pretty much all over the entire thing. It's such a huge bush, so I hesitate to like take it out, and Sarah, the neighbor, says that it does fine, so I'll watch it over the summer see what happens. Um, if I like it, then I'll keep it. If I don't, then maybe I'll take it out and replace it with something else. We'll see. But if any of you have any experience with a uh, black spot on your roses, specifically if it affects plants next to it, let me know because I'm planning on putting uh, dahlias all along the back here. So this is going to be a dahlia row. So I'm going to do dahlias in the back and then in the front part of it, do something that's a little bit shorter, so bursts of other things. So I just don't want, I wanna make sure that the dahlias don't get um, disease because of the black spot on this rose. You can kind of see it better back there on that one that's like more awake and alive. But yeah, nothing in this bed yet. This will be planted much later. This is going to be a peppers and tomatoes bed and then I'll carry for it. I have uh, nine peppers plants I'm planning on putting in here and maybe two or three if I can fit them tomato plants along the back row right there and then I'm going to put three more tomato plants right here. So this whole row will just be uh, peppers and tomatoes. supplies here that I got from Home Depot and the bag or the packets of seeds that I'm planning on 
sewing today, I'm going to do carrots today. I'm going to do spinach today. And I'm also going to direct sew some poppies along the front here. And then I hope they'll be done by the time I'm ready to plant warmer um, season flowers later in the season. So this is all gonna be a flower bed here. I'm going to intersperse some flowers into these beds just to get the pollinators in, especially the ones that the pollinators love the most. There's Andrew coming along with a very important aspect of this project. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Huh? So thank you. Yeah, of course. So uh, what are you going to do for me today? Uh, hopefully I'm going to put a hose line in. Yes! So there's no water that comes to the exterior of the apartment building, so I can't really water my plants without carrying the water to it, which is just not efficient. So he is going to run water to the exterior for me, hopefully, and I'll have access to running water out here, which is going to be amazing. So that's his project today. And then after I sow my seeds, I have another big project that I want to do, and that is inspired by a Diary of a Lady Gardener on Instagram. She has a sweet pea teepee, and it's so cool, and so I really wanted to make my own. So I bought this really big pot from Home Depot. I collected some fallen, um, longer branches in the park, and I'm going to construct a teepee and train and then I'll take my sweet peas. These are the Charlie's Angel variety. I got those from Select Seeds that I've grown from seed with the help of Swan Cottage Flowers. And I'm going to train those up the sticks, the branches that I've collected to create this like bushy sweet pea teepee. So I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's gonna look really cool. I mean, I've seen the photos from Diary of a Lady Gardener, so I had to do it. It started raining a lot, but it's gonna be raining literally all weekend. So I don't know when else I'm gonna get this stuff planted or when I'm gonna film this video. So I went inside to get my Gilligan hat that I use for uh, tubing on the river. And um, I'm just gonna keep going because it's fine. It's a little rain, you know? of poppies. They're one of my favorite flowers too. So poppies do not like their roots messed with. So you don't start these indoors. You direct sow these outside. Um, my last frost is about a week off. So I'm probably a little late in getting these out, at least according to the seed packet. It says to start them a couple uh, to three weeks before last frost, but it should be okay. Um, I have a bunch of different varieties. The Shirley poppy, that's from Florette. It's a gray poppy, the traditional corn poppy that's red, um, California poppy, it's like a yellow color. A bunch of the bread seed poppies and these pom-pom poppies. Left to their own devices, poppies will self-seed like crazy if you let them go to seed. So I'm gonna plant them kind of like on the borders here and then maybe right here along the rocks so it hopes that they'll like kind of go this way and if they do seed over here to try to contain them a bit but yeah so I'm gonna put some up here 
and then some over here. I'll probably do the gray ones and the traditional red ones here, and then all of the bread seed varieties along there. That's the poppies done. I've sewn those all along right there and then the edge of the front of that bed. And then after the carrots, or I've done the carrots, but the last thing today is gonna be this spinach. It's a Baker Creek one. It's the Gigante d'Invierno. <laughs> so spinach is another one that likes to be direct sewn. Um, from my research at least, it's not one that uh, you want to start indoors. So I'm going to plant that now. Um, I'm going to put it in the place where I'm going to put a warm weather crop later because it will bolt in the heat. So hopefully I can do some rotation planting so after this is done I can plant something warmer weather uh, like the tomatoes. So I'm thinking about putting them right there or the cucumbers or something like that. So I'll put them where I'm eventually going to put a warmer weather plant. constructed. I just need to get some twine which is inside to tie up the top right there and then the idea is that the sweet peas will be planted around each of these. I'll fill that in more so it's more stable and then I'll train them up the sticks. I don't think I'll take cuttings from the sweet peas. I'll just leave it to be kind of a more sculptural Thing. I really love how the sticks look that we collected in Prospect Park. to do um, three around every stake. I have two more right there, but these ones are not quite ready to go out, I feel. They need a little bit more time, so I'm gonna let them keep growing in there, and then I'll plant them around the center pole. So ideally, these will grow up to the very top of the frame before it starts flowering, and then it'll be this beautiful flowering teepee. Thank you. Mm. 